What is going on everybody and welcome back to the channel once again for another video. Today we're going to be going over and doing an updated and revised review on the 2020 Apollo RFZ and we'll go ahead and uh, cover some of the common issues that uh, I've had over the last say 25 hours of ride time with the bike. So let's get right into it. So I've gone over and written a little list here uh, about some of the things about the bike. So we will go over and start with some of the great things about it. Uh, so the first thing is I really do enjoy the power that the 125 has. It's plenty enough pep. Uh, to have enough fun on this bike and get up to no good and have some fun. If you guys do want to see some riding, uh, I'll leave a card up in the top right corner. Uh, you can just click on that or it'll be a link down in the description and you can check out some riding videos. I got lots of riding videos, tuning videos, everything to cover the Apollo RFC. Just uh, click the link in the channel and uh, you can hop over and check out all sorts of videos I got covering the Apollo RFC. Uh, so next after the engine, the next thing I did enjoy about this bike uh, is the suspension that it comes with. So it has this Volk uh, rear shock as well as Volk uh, inverted front forks. And what is nice about the rear is there is some adjustability up on the coil. So you can go ahead and compress the coil more or less. And then you have your uh, air PSI pressure up top. So you can go ahead and add or remove air to the rear shock depending on your weight, which is convenient. Uh, the next thing I really do like about this bike is that it's the perfect size that you can go out riding with someone on a 350 Husqvarna as I've shown in my most recent video uploaded on Wednesday. You guys can go ahead and check that out as well. Uh, you can ride this bike with a full size bike and go out on the trails, enjoy your day with it and uh, have no issues riding around and go up to any of the lakes or whatever you're doing with your buddies with like a full size bike. I've gone out with the 350, the 250 Gas Gas and this bike really doesn't have any issues riding around with them for the day. Uh, as well as when you want to go with your buddies with their pit bikes, you can take this out to the pit bike crew and go ride around with them. And it's just like the perfect size for doing both kinds of activities. And the other thing I like about it is the size of the bike. It's a really friendly sized bike. The handlebars are nice and low, the seat's low. Everything about it just is, is comforting for someone who's a beginner rider. And it's just really a nice size. Uh, the next thing I really enjoy about this is that it has dual disc brakes. So if you went back and looked at the video I had with my buddy Todd and his Kawasaki 110 KLX, uh, his bike was double the price. It's a 110 instead of a 125, and they still come with drum brakes, and they still come with drum brakes front and rear, which is crazy for double the price that uh, that brake comes with drums and then half the price. This RFZ has disc brakes front and rear, which is really nice. Uh, the bike is just super predictable, which is like a huge thing for me. Just being able to ride a bike when you're learning to have something that the throttle is just predictable and the bike is just going to go where you think it's going to go. And the next thing I do like is that it has a kickstand. So a lot of the bikes uh, don't have kickstands and one of my buddies have to go find a tree or something to lean the bike up against. It's nice when I can just pop the kickstand out and uh, you're off and on your way. And the, honestly, the best reason, the thing that I love the most about the Apollo RFC is going to be the best bang for buck. It's just, it's $1,700 Canadian shipped to your door and you have a pit bike, a dirt bike, you go rip the trails, go hang with your buddies in the pits, do whatever you want with it. It's like a great all around uh, pit bike or dirt bike, whatever you want to use it for. You can upgrade the tires, put some bigger tires on it. Uh, we'll talk about that later. So that there is my list of the pros uh, going over the Apollo RFC. I really do enjoy this bike. It's been nothing but fun every time I've taken it out. Uh, but we'll go over and let's hop into some of the cons that I've dealt with this bike. First con is going to be that the brake lever and shifter levers aren't really that strong and I've already bent mine. I've bent the brake lever on it. I'll show you here. So that's pretty far bent out. It used to be like sitting right underneath alongside the engine casing so that's been pretty far bent out but I mean that's a given when you hit a rock etc. Our next con is going to be the shifting issue. If you guys had watched my most recent video with the Husqvarna you'll notice that when I was doing my shifting uh, in the videos I'd go to shift and when you'd press it down a click or half a click up instead of it going down instead of the shifter going down and then coming back up it would go down and get stuck into like a false neutral uh, which you guys can go ahead and check out my last video and you'll see what I'm talking about that's an issue I was having with the bike uh, another issue that like every single person is gonna have is your carburetor just adjusting the carb uh, you're gonna need to do that probably is just you're gonna have to get mess around with the carb probably buy an aftermarket carb like most of us we buy this Makuni aftermarket carb and then what really sucks about the carbs is that the adjusting screw is that guy right up in 
there, that little hole right there, that's the adjusting screw. So there's like literally no way to get a screwdriver in there or anything. You have to like custom make something so you can get a, a flathead up in there to adjust the fuel screw, which can be a huge pain in the ass. Uh, the next thing that sucks about this bike is the chain slacks a lot. It's a Chinese chain and they're cheap and this chain likes to stretch a whole hell of a lot and then you'll stretch your chain out enough that it's gonna start popping off the rear ring and then you're gonna be losing your chain on the trail and then it's a whole pain in the ass because you gotta slack it way off and then pop the chain back on, blah, blah, blah. It sucks. That's another shitty thing about the bike. Uh, the next thing is losing some exhaust bolts. So I've lost this bolt right in here. It's a little dark for you guys. That bolt right there is a custom bolt that I had to put in because on the other side there's a weld on the nut and the nut had broken off. I don't think you'll be able to see it on this side. Mm, it's right in behind this square right here is the nut. It's a really shitty spot. But anyways, there's a really poor weld on the nut. The nut broke off, the bolt backed out, and then my exhaust was rattling down the trail, which I also have in one of my previous videos. So check through the library and get yourself some RFC content. Uh, next to losing bolts, what else? The exhaust and the chain stay. There's a chain guide down here. You can see I got a zip tie holding in one of these because, well, that came loose as well. So that's why you want to go over and Loctite, like literally everything. Clearly I didn't Loctite those two. Uh, Should have, for sure. I've Loctited like 90% of the other bolts. So that's definitely something you want to go over and do is Loctite some of the bolts on your bike. Uh, another thing that's happened to my bike is the kickstand spring. I've gone over some of the, like really rough, rocky terrain and bounce around the kickstand spring comes popping off and then your kickstand comes down in the middle of your ride and wants to fucking wipe you out. So that's another thing is your kickstand spring. Uh, I, I went and just pulled it extra tight and wrapped the pieces around on these two nubs just extra taut so that spring is like extra stiff and tight on there so hopefully that doesn't pop off again. Um, another thing is the front tire. That likes to just leak. It has like a slow leak and you'll drop like, I don't know, a PS PSI or two every day. So that's just something you always gotta check your tire pressures before you go out. Cause well, this one has a slow leaking front tire. Uh, and then the last con I have about these bikes uh, is just the tire size in specific that I got, which is the 14 inch front and the 12 inch rear. Uh, I just want the 17 inch front and the 14 inch rear for, cause I do a lot more trail riding up with some of the rocky, really rough terrain and having the bigger roll resistance diameter tire just makes it easier to get over some of those big rocks. So that's my last con is I just wish I had the larger tires that the, it looks to be the DB X18 and the 15 get down in the States. This one comes with the smaller 14 and 12 inch wheels, which are okay. And they totally get the job done. You can see my videos. I've ridden it up all sorts of gnarly trails, but it sure as hell would make it a whole hell of a lot easier if I had those slightly larger wheels. Uh, so that's the end of my con list. Moving on. We're gonna go ahead and move up onto our touch-up fixes. So what are things that I've gone over to make this bike as good as it possibly can be and as enjoyable? Uh, you're gonna be starting with an aftermarket carb. Like I said, the carburetor, you have to mess with those so much. So I went out and got a Makuni carburetor, just simplifies things, make it way easier. You can have an actual adjustable carb that you can clean out and change everything on it, unlike the OEM carb, which is just junk, pretty much. Uh, and then as well as the upgraded UNI air filter, and uh, it's a two-stage filter and then you fill it with uh, <clears throat> air filter oil and that's a whole hell of a lot better than the stock one because the stock one you can literally see daylight from the inside of it which is not what you want to see from a filter uh, and then as well as I've upgraded my brake and clutch levers uh, to these foldable ones so if you wipe out they can actually bend backwards so you don't break them and then I'm going to upgrade as well to these I've got a set of bark busters here which those guys just go like this over your handlebars, go in the end here, and then you protect your knuckles from trees when you're riding. So got to still do that upgrade and stick those on, but that'll be next. And then next on our list here is going to be, I've done the 16 tooth gearing upgrade, which you guys can check out my video on how to increase the top speed of your pit bike. I got a video on that, so that can be linked down in the below, or you can check out on the channel and find that video and check it out there. Uh, another thing you're gonna wanna make sure when you do, when you get the bike, is go over and grease your front and rear axles because they come bone dry from the factory. 
So that's something you definitely want to address right away because you don't want those dry. And then my last upgrade and the final thing that's super important that you do to your bike is going to be one of these guys right here. I know it's a little dirty but it's an hour meter. And as you can see, it counts the hours that the engines ran. So my Apollo's got 24.3 hours ran on it. Uh, and it's just really handy to have one of those so you can tell when to do your oil changes, uh, when you've, how long it's been since you lubed your chain, or it's just general checkovers, so you know every 10 hours, kind of check over your bike, something like that. But I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. You learned something, and if you did, make sure to leave a like down below because it really does help out the channel. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this content and you want to see some more Apollo RFZ content because we got videos coming out all the time. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you got any questions because I will answer it. Uh, until next time, peace out guys.